Hey guys, let's look at lesson 50, which is called polynomial equations. It's not as hard as it sounds, anyway. Um, this is something you want to understand just as a basic, kind of a, I don't know, a skill for life. When I was in high school and took algebra and all this stuff, I, I, I kind of rotely did it, I, but I had no idea what I was doing. I just was like following directions and didn't really understand what was going on until later. Um, but I'm going to try to do this a little bit differently so it makes a little bit more sense and it has more application to you. But um, to, to start off with, let's look, look at the uh, question below that says, name the degree of these polynomials. Well, if you remember, the word degree means uh, the largest exponent value. So let's look at this equation first. The largest exponent value is obviously the 3 here. So the degree of this is 3. And this, it's not that big of a deal that you, you know, uh, we don't mess with degrees too often. We're just going to make a point here in a second. This one, look at this one. What is the degree of that equation? Well, you see that there's a 4 there, so that degree is 4. Now, the one in black, we have y equals 2x plus 1. The question is, what is the degree of that equation? Well, notice how many things we don't know. How many, un how many variables do we have in this equation? And heck, all of them. How many, how many variables do we have? You can see we have 2, right? Okay, so when you have an equation that has two unknowns, like x and y, you can call them a or b or whatever you want, but most of the time they're x and y. And the degree is, you tell me, what's the black uh, equation? What's the degree? Well, if you notice, there's nothing written there. And the y, nothing written in the x, which means it's assumed to be 1, right? So if you have an equation, and there are two unknowns, and the degree is 1, you will get a certain drawing when you actually draw this out. And we'll talk more about what this means in a few minutes, but uh, you will get a line when you draw when you, you know, when you graph out uh, an equation like that one in the black box, you have two unknowns, the degree is one, you're going to get a line. We'll do a couple of these in a second here. So you should just be familiar with the phraseology or phraseology here. Uh, the Cartesian coordinate system is what you see here. You've seen this probably. Uh, this is the, there's an axis here. And basically all these are, I mean, this is, this is just a number line. In other words, here's a one and a two and a three. That's their positive. And this is your negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on and so forth. Okay, that's just a number line going across. That's called the x-axis or the abscissa. Don't worry about it. So that's like something that's like, you know, growing on your tooth or something. Okay, but just call it an x. Okay, the y-axis, all the x, the y-axis is, if you take this x-axis and turn it like, like that, that's the y-axis. They're just another one. And again, you got your positives on this side, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And then your negative is down here. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's just there's just two number lines at 90 degree angles from each other. And you can uh, we we have a couple of names that we do this. Uh, well, the quadrants first is what we do. This is called the first quadrant, right there. That's the second. We go counterclockwise. And there's the third quadrant. You will not be surprised to learn this is the 13th, no, I'm sorry, that's the fourth quadrant. Okay, there it is. That's the fourth quadrant. Okay, and we'll talk more about this. We, we do all kinds of neat stuff like this in trigonometry and all kinds of things like that. But uh, for now, <coughs> you just have an x-axis, you have a y-axis, they're both number lines, they're the quadrants. That isn't, I mean, it isn't super, you know, critical that you know all the quadrant names or whatever, but what you want to be able to do is what we do next is look at information and go, I'm going to make a graph out of that and kind of make sense out of it. And again, I, I went through high school and just bleh, did these and didn't even know what I was doing, really. I just, you know, got it. I guess got away with it or got through it or whatever. So anyway, um, first off, let's graph these. I'm not sure if you guys have ever played um, Battleship. It's the game where you, know, you have those ships and you try to sink them and you go, A4, you know, and you sit there for 45 minutes and never get one single hit on your opponent. And your opponent goes, okay, I'll start with, uh, I don't know, J10. You go, hit, you know, and then the game's over in two minutes and you lost before you even get one single hit. But anyhow, this is the same kind of thing. You're playing Battleship and we're just going to graph these ordered pairs on a rectangular coordinate system, they call it. We'll start with A. And this is an alphabetical order. This is always the X. This is always the Y. X and Y, X and Y, and so on. And knowing that helps you later on when you're graphing these. There's something neat that you can do with um, this stuff, but we'll talk more about that later. But okay, let's go three and two. Well, we know from the number line, well, here's our X uh, axis and there's the Y axis. 
and the number line goes positive this way and negative this way here, and it goes positive up here and negative down there. Okay, so when they say to you three, that means you're going over positive three. Okay, that's the x value. All right, I'm gonna go over, oops, three. Okay, the y means you're going to go positive. In other words, there's the positive, there's the negative, here's the positive, here's the negative. You're gonna go up two from there. So really, this isn't your point at all. This is three two right there. Okay, you've probably seen that before. All right, uh, negative four zero. Again, that's an x and a y. So I got negative four, which means I'm going to the left four. One, two, three, four. The y zero, which means I'm not going anywhere. So there's my point right there. That is negative four zero. Okay, done done. All right, zero and negative five. Now this this time it means the x value is zero which means you don't go left any, you don't go right any. You just stay there. The y value is negative five, and then you go down on the y axis because it's a, you know, the number line, the negative numbers are on this side. So one, two, three, four, five, there is your zero and negative five, okay? And the last one, negative six and negative two, well, that means the x are gonna go negative six, which is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, and going negative on the y-axis is down two, and there is your last point. Okay. That's just the basics on how to, graph, how to graph points. You might be very familiar with that, and you can skip over that, that's fine. Now here's where it gets interesting, okay? Um, we're gonna do this, uh, just practice these very quickly, but hang on for the next lesson, we'll figure out what we can use this for. But for right, for right now, just do those ordered pairs uh, on the rectangular coordinate system, and uh, you know what, just pause it real quick, and I'll graph them when you're done unpausing it. Okay, A and B, there's my X, there's my Y. So one, two, three, four, five, six, negative six, okay, because that's the X axis. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way down here, okay, that's A. Four and negative five, which means the X is positive, the Y is negative. So on an X, one, two, three, four, and then negative five, one, two, three, four, five, and there is my point, okay. I will see you next time.